Good morning. Can you all hear me okay? <laughs> now then, is that better? Okay, welcome to Flat Lake Baptist Church, August 30th service. Uh, before we begin, uh, most of you sit in the same seat, right? Uh, those that were here the other Wednesday night, we already told them your songbook has a little paper sticking up in it. Write your name on that piece of paper where it stays sticking up. That's your songbook until we get through. <laughs> that way we don't have to print song sheets. Nobody else handles the songbook. That's your songbook. <laughs> okay? And... Uh, That way we don't have to worry about passing germs or anything like that. And we don't have to print song sheets because uh, most of you sit in the same seat. Now two of you are in seats together. What happened? Did I label them wrong? <laughs> okay, let's uh, have Jim come up and lead us in our first song. Where is Jim? There he is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Number 216, first, second, fifth verses. Remain standing for our prayer. And I'll ask Brother Gary if he'll lead us, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, especially today that we can now come back to thy house and worship you, take comfort from each other, help us through this crisis. We just pray, Lord, especially those that are in the nursing homes. Protect them, Lord, if it be thy will. They're under extreme pressure to try to stay healthy. We just pray for those people, especially Lord. People that are nations, rulers, give them the proper that, that, that they will make the right 
right decisions, be able to do the things that will protect the citizens of this country. Pray, Lord, for our first responders, especially those that are out every day trying to combat this illness. Those that try to protect the people. Firemen, especially, Lord, as they battle these sliders that they have to face each day. Especially, Lord, bless all the churches in this country and throughout the world that we are under pressure to not gather together. Just be with the pastor, Lord, as he leaves us this morning. Give him the words to say that will help us, Lord, in our everyday living. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thank you. May be seated. Okay. Have to remember to be on at the right time and off at the right time <laughs> with my microphone here. And uh, trying new things. Hopefully it'll, we'll eventually get everything worked out to everybody's satisfaction. Before we get into the announcements, we need to consider ourselves in business session. We always leave the meeting open for trustee business and we had a, a water heater start leaking badly over there at the parsonage and uh, that we didn't discover for a little while and that'll need to be fixed and be more than the standard amount that the trustees do without approval so uh, i guess we need a motion to uh, replace the water heater over there at the parsonage anyone want to make that motion we have a second or a motion do we have a second second have a second any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed no. And that'll take care of that business. Thank you. Uh, a couple of cards to read this morning. Uh, one says, thank you so much for the check and well wishes of graduation and going to college. Prayer and love, the Taylor Kaiser family. Also, uh, says, thank you all for loving and supporting me through 18 years. I love Flat Lake Baptist Church. That's all of you, Cameron Hewitt. And we appreciate the thanks and appreciate the uh, privilege of knowing you all and wish you the best as you continue in life. Uh, let's see, in, uh, wherever I put my bulletin. We're losing everything today. Here it is. Okay. Um, we are glad to be able to be back in person today. And as I mentioned in Sunday school, all of the classes except the ladies' class are small enough that I think they can stay six feet apart in their classrooms. So we will try to resume normal except the ladies class will be out here in the auditorium where they can spread out so we'll try that next sunday we'll not do any of the other evening services because the virus is still out there and there's a lot of it and if someone picked it up and didn't know it uh, at least if they picked it up early in the week they'd know it before the next sunday rolled around <laughs> so uh, to stay away from that midweek would help us in that event so we'll uh, continue just with Sunday morning for the time being, okay? Except for our business meeting uh, when we do that. Um, and everything we say is subject to change. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see, birthdays. Last week, uh, there was Tina Mink, Twyla Van Hook, and Jackson Carter coming up this week. Taylor Kaiser on the 2nd, and Linda Van Hook on the 5th. Uh, back there's Linda. Let's uh, sing happy birthday to her. Happy birthday to you.
prayer requests. Remember Emily Jones and Ron also. Uh, remember Terry Petersheff. Add both of those to your list. Are there others that you want to add to the list today? And next Sunday will be the first Sunday we'll be clearing many of these off. So uh, if you're wanting them to stay on, give them to me again or let me know that they need to stay on. Okay? Any others? My sister's Marilyn Harvest and Okay. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Unspoken this morning. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we are so grateful for the privilege that we have of prayer. We thank you that you hear our prayers and that you're always watching out for us and you know what's best. You know what's coming in the future. And you know what direction we need to be walking in today. So help us to be faithful to listen to your Holy Spirit and to follow your guidance, to seek your will and not our own. We thank you for your love for us. We are so undeserving of all the things that you've given us. And most certainly the gift of salvation. But we thank you that you made it possible through Jesus. We ask that you would be with these that are sick and hurting physically, needing your healing touch. We ask you to be with them. For those, Father, that are grieving, we ask you to comfort them. And Father, again, we ask you to bless our nation. And we know that the only path to that blessing is a return to righteousness. So help us to do that. And help us as your people to be the salt and the light that which would lead people back to Jesus. We ask that you would use this service to your honor and glory. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Number 131. The sweetest name on earth. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells me what my father hath in store for every day. And though sunshine all the way. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe. Who in each sorrow
responsive scripture reading number one. Number one in the back of your hymn. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. O let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for thou shalt judge the people righteously, and govern the nations upon earth. Let the people praise thee, O God, let all the people praise thee. Then shall the earth yield her increase. And God, even our own God, shall bless us. God shall bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Amen. Stephanie. I'm going to try to sing Look for Me at Jesus' Feet for you if I can do it without coffee. <laughs> Just wait. 
Thank you, Stephanie. I want to appreciate all those that have helped us out with the uh, services as we've been trying to stream them and get them to you when we've been away from church. And uh, Brinkley especially, God sent him at just the right time with his know-how. And uh, it made me feel good this morning though because he forgot something. <laughs> he forgot his connector and we had to uh, rig it. <laughs> but uh, appreciate him very much for all his help. And uh, Polly and Stephanie and, and uh, Becky and, and Fern. Uh, uh, I think she considers this her family over here, <laughs> and every chance she gets, she comes from so to be with us, and she's helped us out a lot uh, during this period of time also. Good to have the other farm with us here too today. <laughs> and uh, whenever you hear that song, Stephanie just sang, who do you think of? Cleo Whitaker. Cleo Whitaker. That was one of his favorites. And uh, we've... Uh, seen so many of those wonderful Christians go that are waiting there for us. Turn in your Bibles this morning to the book of Luke. I've been in the Old Testament. I love uh, 1 and 2 Samuel, 1 and 2 Kings, 1 and 2 Chronicles. Uh, a lot of good stuff there, but uh, taking a break there today and coming to the Gospel of Luke. Chapter 12. I'll be looking at verse 13 through 40, but to begin with, I'm going to be reading 13 through 15. Luke chapter 12, verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, Master, speak to my brother, that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for what we have. Help us to truly be thankful and not be grieving over what we don't have. And Father, there's so many applications to that principle. But the Apostle Paul said he had learned to be content in whatever state he was in, whether that was in prison or whatever it was. Help us to be content also. Father, help us to realize that you have given us what money cannot buy. You've given us forgiveness. You've given us salvation. You've given us everlasting life. You've promised us a place in glory that we'll get to be with you in one day. Thank you for that. And may your Holy Spirit continue to convict us whenever we go astray. Not only in our actions, but in our thoughts which lead to our actions. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. man came to Jesus and said, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. Now we don't know what happened. We don't know whether the inheritance got left to the other brother and this one got left out. Uh, we know that the elder normally got uh, the lion's share, but uh, we don't know if that was the case or not. But uh, even if it was, what's the problem with wanting more? The problem is we're blaming God for the situation that we're in. Anytime we're unhappy with our situation and complaining, we're blaming God. If we stomp our toe, now we may be aggravated at ourselves, but let's make sure that's as far as it goes. Because if we're thinking, poor me, I stumped my toe, 
that in a sense we're blaming God. He says, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. There's a feeling, especially in America, America is the place of opportunity. The American dream is for everyone to get rich. Our forefathers said that God has endowed each of us with the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Most people misquote that. They say life, liberty, and happiness. God can't make us happy <laughs> unless we're willing to be happy through the only way that happiness comes, and that's through a relationship with God, knowing that we've been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, that we've been given that gift that money cannot buy. And so if we've got more than money can buy, we're rich. We're rich. We tend to make valuations on things. If a person lives to be 70, 80, 90, or 100, God's been good to them. If they die at 20 or 7, God cheated them. No, he didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. If he takes you to heaven, he's given you more than anything in this life can be worth. And so, how can you be cheated if you get to go to heaven early? You can't be. And yet we tend to make similar valuations on things in this life. Well, that person's house is better than mine. That person's car is better than mine. And I know I work harder than they do. Who are we blaming? We're blaming God. Jesus said, man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? Now, yes, Jesus had the power. He could have snapped his fingers or spoken the word or whatever and everything would have moved. But the man needed to come to a realization that his values were in the wrong place. His priorities were all messed up. We're all subject to that temptation. The lesson this morning, put on the whole armor of God. If we don't, we're going to mess up. And this is one of the areas that we can mess up. Thinking that we deserve better because the others have got it better. We deserve it. There are people in this world that have had much more trouble physically than I've had. I've been blessed. Sometimes I have an ache or a pain. I don't like it, but I've been blessed. If you can walk, you've been blessed more than the person who can walk. Don't complain. Say thank God for what I've got. If you can't walk anymore, thank God that you once could walk. If you can't see anymore, thank God that you once could see. If you can breathe, thank God that you can breathe. Whatever you've got, be thankful for it. And thankful for the fact that God has given us something that will make all of these things that we have to go through that we don't like worthwhile, meaningless. The Apostle Paul said, count it all joy when you go through various afflictions. Is he crazy? <laughs> But that's what he said. Rejoice when you have troubles. Why? Because it gives us an opportunity in our troubles to give God the glory. The Apostle Paul, Jim talked about in the Sunday School lesson there this morning, talked to people in prison. He rejoiced. He and Silas, after being cast into the Philippian prison, sang praises. They were happy after being beaten half to death. And the prisoners 
didn't leave when the earthquake happened and the doors opened because they wanted to know more about what Paul and Silas had. When someone speaks from a difficulty, people are more apt to listen. If the church gets oppressed like I think is coming to the church, and there's a risk for saying, I believe in Jesus, He's my Savior, when you say it, people are going to say, boy, it must be real, because He sure is risking a lot for saying those words. But we tend to feel like, well, we got it bad. We got it made. The poorest person in America has a whole lot more than most of the world has. And those of us who consider ourselves good working Americans, we've got it way, 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 way better than most of the world has. So we shouldn't be looking, coveting what someone else has. Well, you're not one of the commandments. <laughs> Thou shalt not covet. It's basic. Be happy with what you've got. And Jesus told him a parable. He said, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room to where to bestow my fruits. He said, I'll pull down my barns and build greater, and there I'll bestow or store my fruits and my goods. And I will say unto my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years, Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night shall thy, thy soul be required of thee. Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? We want more. Most of us have food in our refrigerator, food in our pantry. We could last a while might not be eating what we want. I probably wouldn't have enough total to last more than a week or so. <laughs> but we've got food to last. Most of us probably have a dollar or two in our pocket. But we want more. In fact, we want enough to know that it'll see us through to the end of our days. And you might say, well, what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, if that's our main goal in life, it's wrong. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with planning. Uh, we should plan. We should work. Uh, but Scripture talks about working and laying aside the store in order to do what? To have to give to those that don't have. Hmm. That's not exactly what we were doing it for, was it? We want to be able to take care of ourselves. And I said last Sunday when I preached to you all, I'm preaching to myself. But it's so easy to want to set aside. Now you say, well, this rich man should have been sharing instead of tearing down his barns and building bigger. What's the difference in what he's doing and in what we do? We want to set aside any of you ever heard of the Lord's Prayer or the Model Prayer? What did He say? Give us this day our daily bread. If you want to enlarge upon that, give us tomorrow tomorrow's bread. <laughs> but we want Him to give us today, tomorrow, next week, next year, the rest of our lives bread. That's contrary to faith. We're depending on ourselves and, and our ability and our foresight instead of depending on God. We're not supposed to covet. We're supposed to trust and walk with the Lord day by day. Part of the reason for the strife in America today is people feeling like they've been cheated. And not everybody has what everybody else has. But every Christian should be happy with the life that God has given them, knowing that God has a purpose for that life. 
And if we want to bring about change in society, there's nothing wrong with that, with working for that. As long as that's not the main thing we're working for, if we're working for Jesus first, and praising the name of God first, and giving thanks to Him for what He's given us, that's essential. He says, verse 22, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what you shall eat, neither for the body what you shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body more than raiment. Most of us have plenty of clothes to wear. This thing doesn't want to stay put, <laughs> like a lot of Christians. <laughs> Most of us have so many clothes to wear that we spend too much time figuring out what we're going to put on. <laughs> Most people in the world don't have that problem. They can get ready to go to church real quick because they're the only one outfit they got. He says, consider the ravens. They don't sow nor reap. They don't have storehouses or barns. God feeds them. He says, you're much better than the fowls. And he says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? If that had worked, I'd have been taller. But it didn't work. Don't worry. Choir sings that song, I won't have to worry anymore. We don't have to worry now, we just do. God is in control. And when he's through with us, he's going to take us to heaven. And we'll be glad. In fact, the quicker he's through with us, the gladder we'll be there. Uh, we may have some pain to go through here in this life, but God's got a plan for that. Paul said, no one, well, let, let me go back to what Jesus said. Jesus said, no one has left family or friends or houses or possessions in this life but what he'll receive more than a hundredfold and in the next everlasting life. God will make it up to us. What goes on in this life is so inconsequential compared to the, the glory of the next that it doesn't matter who's got more and who's got little. And if we're envying those that's got more, we're making a big mistake because we need to be saying, thank you, Lord, for what you gave me. Thank you, Lord. I need to say thank you that I made it to five foot six, even though it would have been nice to have been six five and played basketball. Thank you for what you've done for me. We need to say, Thou shalt not covet. Have you been coveting this week, this year, or all your life? It's time we stopped. It's time we learned to be content with what we have and happy with Jesus. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you've done for us. We thank you most importantly for Jesus Christ, for that gift of salvation. And Father, if there's one here this morning that doesn't yet know Jesus, I pray that this would be the day and hour in which they open their heart and receive that marvelous gift of salvation, acknowledging their sins and your desire to forgive them, your willingness to forgive them, and allowing that to take place. And Father, for those of us that are your children, if we've strayed away from you, help us to come back and acknowledge our error and accept your welcome arms welcoming us home. Have your will and way in every decision that is made. We'll give you the praise we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our hymn of invitation is number 399. <laughs> Thank you.
heard from anyone this morning? Anything you want to share? Praise the Lord. Great niece that got baptized the other day. Amen. Good message today, Richard. Anybody else? Anything else on your heart that you want to share? Be in prayer for these that are sick. Be in prayer for us as we meet together that all of us will stay well and none of us will get the virus. And uh, um, just pray for our country. Uh, as Jim said this morning in Sunday school, this is a plague that he sent worldwide. And the path of righteousness is the only way we'll get out from an under it. I'll ask uh, Brother Joey if he would lead us in our closing prayer. Most kind of gracious prayer, Father, just thank you so much for letting us come and meet and gather here in your house this morning. Lord, just ask that you just keep a special hand upon each and every one of us as we go about our way this week, Lord. Lord, just ask that you just keep your hand upon our nation. Keep your hand upon the leaders of this country, Lord. Put those things in the that we should do on our minds and our hearts. That we do what you should have us to do. I would just ask that you just be with your team, be with the men and women protecting this country across the world. Keep your hands safety upon them all the people you live. I would just ask that you just continue to bless us. Be with us, Lord, to the point of error. These things we ask in your name before I say, Amen. <coughs>